A 120 point improvement and a GMAT 740 is no mean feat. Not many people do it. Yet, Runank made it almost a certainty by leveraging uh, or by, by learning the right methods, leveraging data, and using analytics to fine tune its preparation. Hi, my name is Rajesh Sadana. I'm one of the co founders of eGMAT, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how Runank charted his journey and was able to achieve this feat despite uh, suffering with COVID. So let's start from the very beginning. Runang came to us with certain strengths and certain weaknesses, what was, um, and a starting score of 620 or so. So what was his strengths? Uh, he had two strengths in RC and arithmetic, and his weaknesses or the areas that he needed to work on were SC, CR, and algebra geometry. Now Runang started working uh, on, 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 on quant first, and he started working on algebra and geometry first. So next I'm gonna walk you through how he, he turned this weakness into his strengths. Probably the most important trait that you need to excel on the GMAT is diligence, and Runak displayed his diligence um, in, in the very first course that he, was, he attempted. This is the algebra course on the eGMAT platform. It has about 80 learning activities. Runak did most of the course. Not only that, he did it really well. Now, each learning activity within this course is evaluated, which means you get a score. Our expert AI tells you how well you've done, and you can see he has really good scores or so. Um, similarly, in geometry, he, meant he repeated this feat. Now, geometry was, was a particular area of weakness for him. You can see how in 2D1, um, he had a very low GMAT skills diagnostics uh, score, but then by the end of the module, he was able to perfect this. Now, the, the thing to note over here was that he was able to do this in the first go. As you can see, he only attempted this file one, and this was towards the end of March. Now, once Runank was done with, with the, both geometry and algebra, he moved on to, to sentence correction. And again, he repeated this feat. Again, as I say, one of the key traits is of, of, of anyone who wants to ace a GMAT is, is diligence, and, and he was really diligent. Now, mind you, uh, there was a three-week break when he was doing sentence correction. He actually suffered from COVID, yet this did not deter um, his, his diligence. He was still able to get really good scores in concept files, excellent scores in practice quizzes. And, and as you can see, uh, in certain cases, I've only selected the, the practice quizzes, he spent considerable time on, on files when expert gave him feedback. The 65 minutes spent on, on application file one is a clear indication of the same. Let's kind of remove the filter here, and, and you can really see many other files where he spent a considerable amount of time as well. Uh, again, this just shows that he wanted to excel. He wasn't just looking at finishing the course. You can see more evidence of, of the same in critical reasoning where he didn't do many files in the first go, yet he revised, which is what led to these excellent scores. Examples of the same are um, about you know, 170 minutes spent on application file one, Examples of the same also come up in an application file to an assumption and so on and so forth. These are big courses. Uh, they require someone to stay focused for about 30 to 40 minutes, which is what the length of each activity is. The very fact that Ronank was able to, to do this one after the other shows that effort over there. Now, once he was done with these courses, Ronank went and cemented his learning and which is where he leveraged our scholarinium. Let's go into the sentence correction module. And well, let's actually expand that. You can see how he's gone through uh, cementing quizzes. Again, there were quizzes where he did not score um, as well as he should have. He did the strategic review, was able to get there. S then he moved on to hard quizzes. And because he did well in, in medium cementing quizzes, he was able to score above the threshold in hard quizzes. You can see the same thing happen in, in, in critical reasoning uh, where he scored above the threshold. A 70% in hard cementing quiz is excellent. It's an indication of a 90th percentile student. Now, once he was done with cementing, Runang went into test readiness. Um, I'm gonna actually show how he did test readiness, but because he did test readiness well, his, his metrics overall improved. You can see this. Uh, when you look at his overall metrics, his hard metrics are, are good, but then in critical reasoning, they're below threshold. In sentence correction, they're just above threshold as well as in RC as well. But if you take the filter to the last 20 questions, these metrics look a lot better. Now, this may seem incremental improvement, but in the context of the GMAT, this incremental improvement is huge on hard questions. 
not just that, on medium questions, Ronanc was almost perfect. You can see about 90% accuracy or higher in medium questions, which means on the actual test, Ronanc went into the high ability zone right onto the test. He got maximum opportunity to, to enhance his or increase his scores or so. Now let's talk about the test readiness and how Ronanc used data in test readiness. Runang did about 20 test readiness quizzes. Now, some of these test readiness quizzes were, were as big as a, as, as a, as a mock or so. Um, now, he did these quizzes, he did really well. Despite that, Runang spent a lot of time on improving these scores further. How did he do it? He looked at the review list that our AI generates, which not only looks at questions that you've answered incorrectly, but questions that, um, that, that, that you've, you've taken longer or questions where you uh, that that you probably made a mistake because you did not spend enough time or so and 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 by looking at those questions and let's take a look at this question over here where he took about two and a half minutes when he should have taken about a minute and a half what this did was the system told him that he was in the 70th percentile and and even though he solved the question correctly a, a question like this could potentially lead him to waste precious few seconds on the test by revising that solution the detailed solution here, he could then make sure that he, he's, he gets to this question faster or a similar question faster on the real test. Now, when he did cementing in test readiness, he was then ready to take Sigma X mocks. And, and you can see how his performance improved on the Sigma X mock. Starting from that 620, when he improved on his quant, he was able to get to a 680 in February and then to a 710 in July, where he had a good quant score and a really good verbal score. Within quant, you can see that improvement in algebra and symmetry. That's almost a perfect score. Now, once he further did test readiness, he was then in 20 days able to improve his score from a, from a 710 to a 740. You can see his ability scores in SC, CR, and RC. Really good ability in SC, great or, or good ability in CR, and while maintaining his excellent ability in reading comprehension. Now, most people need about 150 hours to go from a 620 to a 740 or about 120 point improvement or so. These 150 hours for most working professionals take about two months. On the other hand, if you're looking for a 70 to 80 point improvement, you can do that in about a month if you devote about 20 hours a week learn, studying for the GMAT. If you're seeking for a 120, 150, 200 or an 80 point improvement and you need a deterministic plan to go to, to get to your target score, then write to me at rajat at e-gmat.com. Happy learning.